What is 45% of 120? My goodness, I can say that twice. What is 45% of 120? That could be dollars, that could be all sorts of stuff that 120 represents, but the 45 is a percent. It is a percent. So we're going to work with it. We're going to work with it a couple of ways here. We're going to pick it up as a proportion, and also we're going to work with it as just a simple decimal problem. So let's take a look first at the proportion if we can here, all right? It says, first of all, what is 45% of 120? So when we're setting this up, there we go, uh, we're going to have, we're going to set it up in a proportion style, which simply means two ratios that are equal to each other. All right, now, percent, the 45%, what that tells me, what that tells me, and where we want to go with this, is that means divided by 100. So we're going to make that 45, we're going to put the percent divided by 100. Somebody knows we hear that 45 over 100. That's what it means, divided by, divided by. That's what a fraction is all about, it's division. Now on the other side, we would like to go with our part, or what we're basically looking for, what is our outcome, and we're going to divide by the base. Now you say, how, Ernie, how do you know what the base is? The base is usually attached to the word of in a simple, straightforward percent. In other words, where do we start? We start with 120 and we're going to look for 45% of that. So here goes the 120 down here. I don't know what it is. I'll call it N up there. Some might want to call it X. Some of you might want to call it A. It's a variable, okay? We don't know what it's representing. But what we're going to do is we're going to allow it to be the part here. And we're going to cross multiply. This is good old proportion land, ratio and proportion here. We're going to multiply the 100 times N. It's going to give us just that, 100 N. Nothing magical there. And on the other side, we're going to multiply, woo, 120. Make that really look like an equals, how about it? Times that 45. And help out a little bit here. Let's go with my calculator just a second. Let's see what we get on that. Save us a little bit of time. How about it? There we got it. 120 times the 45. And this is, folks, this is where the calculator really does come in handy. It just saves us a little bit of arithmetic time. We do come up with 5,400, and we have 100 in. And I know some of you are going to say, are you going to divide by 100 on the calculator? No, I'm not. You know why? Because when we divide 100 into this value, whatever it happens to be, the decimal is going to move in two places. It's going to move in two places. So I'll show you how that works. Divide 100 over here. Divide 100 over here. You see how what happens? Those zeros just simply disappear. That's the same effect as having that decimal move in, moving in two places from the right, moving to the left. And you know what's going to happen when the zeros cancel out? We have 100 canceling out there. We have n equals to 54. Now, I said that's one option. That's going the proportion approach, all right? There's another way that you can do this. And some of you say, well, Ernie, I always just change the decimal and multiply. And let's ask ourselves, why can we just change it to a decimal? Because 45% as a decimal is 45 hundredths, which is the same thing as 45 divided by 100, or 45 over 100, as we like to see in a fraction. So what we're going to do, we're going to basically say our n in this case, which is what we're looking for, that's our part in this case, let me draw a line down here just so we can keep it straight, is equal to that 120, and we're going to multiply it times that 4,500. So we're going to change it to a decimal. And you know what? Multiplying it together, let's go back to the calculator. I've got that for original one because I want us to see that it is the same answer when we get to the end here. Multiply it times 4,500, so that's the decimal with the 45 coming after it. And let's press a big enter. It's 54, which is the same thing we had once we divided by 100. So again, either way is a good option, is a good option. And it kind of depends on where you are in your world of learning your percent problems, all right? Some of your teachers have got you to a point where you're good at cross-multiplying. You're working with ratios, proportions. You tackle it. Works great. Over here, some of you are getting into decimal work, all right? Works great also. For more math help, visit tnlearn.org.